So this is uh, um, actually the result that you want to see. But there's also another way to produce this result. So let us assume that um, I did not ask the analysis to sort by size. And I do not also want to uh, show, I also don't want to show the absolute values. And let us see what will happen in the analysis. So you can see the, the pattern matrix here. So let me show you another way to present this result. Um, remember that in the other one, I sorted by size, but in this particular case, I, I have produced the results without sorting by size. So how will you now identify the factor loadings? So in this case, you can see for this, um, the customer satisfaction, remember that values below 0 0.5 are dropped. Remember, let me take you back to um, the trench hood once more. So there are several metrics that you can use. But in this case, I have set my to um, I set my own to 0 0.5. So remember that there are ser series of metrics that you can use. But in this particular case, I have set my own on 0 0.5 and above so if that becomes the case so you can see that these are so you can see that these are the factors for customer satisfaction so here becomes our customer satisfaction satisfaction and then you can see the next one that we have is customer support feedback customer support satisfaction that is customer supports satisfaction customer support satisfaction so now you look at that here and you can see that in this case we have values from 0 0.5 and above okay and so we highlight that so you can see that all other values here sorry um this is not part of it sorry this is not part of it so you can see that um the values here are above 0 0.5 and then this will lead us to the next factor which is value for money so i will name that value for money and so if you look at that you will locate that here and then i'm gonna highlight that then the next part is the product experience which is the last part so i will highlight that so you can see that all other values here are far below 0 0.5 okay so um, and then i will name that product experience so this is how you can present your so you can see that you can see the same thing here is what we have produced all right the same thing here um, is what we have actually produced in this part then you can now report the result of KMO and bilet test um, um, you can simply pull this and then report in your work first of all um, Report this. So, and then I will also lift the result of the the KMO test and Bartlett test, and then also uh, that should be the first one I'm uh, I'm going to report. then uh, I will report the result of the commonalities as well. So these are the key results that you want to present in your factor analysis. So in this tutorial, here are the key highlights. Number one, ensure that the item statements are personalized, simple, free of ambiguities, not confusing to the respondents. Okay? And then another thing is that these are correlating. We want to see how these three factors here are predicting or correlating with 
um, each other and then correlating with the product satisfaction okay so that is why we've used um, the principal as this factory in this factor analysis one reason why this analysis may have come up um, very fantastic is because the item statements have are already looking good in terms of reliability if the reliability of the measurement skills are not good then chances are that you are likely not going to achieve um, good factor loadings like i have done so that is why it's pretty important that you ensure the item statements are simple there are people who usually have uh, one factor let's say customer uh, customer support satisfaction do we have up to 10 item statements up to 12 item statements no what you need to do is to ensure that you keep your item statements simple and then focused because when people respond to item statements more than the attention span of people are quite short so they don't want to keep on responding to something that is quite so you want to keep them simple so the first thing you need to do is to head over to um scale and then you check you will see that each of these measurement scale loads very well have very good reliability coefficients and that is why they are doing they did well um uh, here and that is why all of them loaded um um, pretty well here so let me show you that and I will select all of them and then select scale if item deleted and then I will run the analysis now you can see that correlated item total correlation you can see that they are looking pretty good okay none is below 0 0.5 here and you can see the chrome bar reliability coefficient is 0 0.87 let me test the next one. So let us check customer support satisfaction. And I'll put them in and then I'll check. You can see this has the reliability coefficient, Chromebox Alpha reliability coefficient of 0 0.90. And you can see that none can see, even the item statement one, all of them have very high correlation among each other. So which means that these items are looking good. They are actually explaining customer support satisfaction in detail, that the respondents understood these item statements pretty well. And you can see that all of them, the, the Chromebox Alpha, even if I delete item statement number one, the Chromebox Alpha reliability coefficient will be 0 0.89. Seven. So, even if I delete any of the item statements here, it will not affect the Chromebox Alpha reliability coefficient. Okay. Let me test the last, the second, the last one. Um, let's say I test value. Let's say product experience, and you can see this is also 0 0.89 and it's loading pretty well. You can see the correlations are quite good. They're correlating well with each other, right?